Hey everybody, once again we're chilling in a car watching Extinct or Alive. Because uh, what's better to start your Sunday mornings, or Monday mornings in this case, with a coffee and some Extinct or Alive. As usual, my name's Key and joining me today is... Hi, I'm Andrew. So, we're jumping in Season 1, Episode 3, which is a Newfoundland Wolf. Uh, these ones were different than the normal, what we'd think of as a gray wolf. Uh, a little bit larger, longer snout, a little bit wider head. And most strikingly, white coats, mm -hmm. almost near white coat, and you know it's kind of their other name is the Newfoundland white wolf. Uh, so you know, definitely fascinating. Much like any wolf species in the North American hemisphere, uh, they went extinct due to overhunting and poaching and just fear of wolves, which humans have had for, I mean, forever. It seems like you know yeah. it's weird we domesticated them and then now we've always had those stories you know the big bad wolf the boy who cried wolf all these different stories you see the gray wolves i mean even in colorado here they went extinct uh, slowly they're starting to either creep back in or be reintroduced and then you hear the sad stories of like the red wolves and stuff like that which i know come mysterious creatures we might actually talk about so mm -hmm. stay tuned for that so andrew going into this episode did you have any hope for this yeah absolutely Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the habitat was still perfect. Um, very habitable for, for a wolf. Um, they had the, a lot of caribou, which is what they hunted, which is what they were, they, they evolved to um, hunt. They yeah. Short, stocky, but... Um, caribou are pretty, pretty stocky animals. Yeah. Uh, you guys might know them by reindeer. Uh, so if you ever go to a zoo or, you know, a petting zoo or... A, you know Christmas themed event like we had the starling we had a reindeer, da reindeer down there uh, that's what they hunt you know these big stocky animals definitely bigger than a you know deer not quite as big as an elk I don't think and they're, they're about 700 pounds yeah they're a little bit stockier so shorter elks are tall mm -hmm. tall creatures so their weights a little bit more evenly distributed um, for me I was like oh, it's so hard because any carnivore they're just so smart like they're built to be really stealthy and cunning and you know even if they are out there it's gonna be super hard to find uh, here in Colorado you have the stories before of the wolves coming back and not really any evidence but then later of you know the grizzlies and the San Juans and it's just so hard to find any predators but you know a little bit more hope for me this week as well going into it compared to the last week's episode mm -hmm. so without getting into spoilers what did you think of this one um i i thought it was pretty neat uh, the majority of the episode was just him sitting out in the bush for hours and hours on end and trying to find some sort of evidence like throwing throwing uh everything out basically yeah. you know distressed animals um, um and he's literally sitting out in 17 degree weather in a bush for whole night <laughs> six seven eight hours yeah he, he legit just spent the night in this blind just waiting and yeah it looked pretty cold um but he threw everything at it um he went there originally because there was a hunter that had shot something that at least to me definitely looked like a wolf and dna showed it was most likely a wolf. I mean, it was large too, much larger than any coyote. Mm -hmm. We we have some large coyotes even up here at Memon Ridge. Pretty big coyotes, mm -hmm. but I've never seen one that big. No, that was definitely wolf-like. Yes. Especially with the face profile, the larger skull, and yeah. the bigger, bigger mouth. I mean, if you've seen a wolf, I mean, they're just so distinct in the face, mm -hmm. and it had the white coloration, mm -hmm. a little bit of gray and like a darker black uh, on the head, but yeah, it definitely looked like a wolf to me. And so that's what brought him out here, you know, you know, you got to have some sort of evidence to want to go to these places. And you might want to believe it's out there, but without strong evidence, it's like, you know, what are you doing? You know, there's other animals that have evidence you got to go look for. So before we get into spoilers, Andrew, rating and recommendation. So, yeah, I mean, I, I give it a seven out of ten. Uh good high quality video just not a ton of action i mean you see the caribou you see you see some moose, moose. Um, a little bit of a fox some fox but uh you know all normal stuff that you would see there to begin with 
as opposed to some of the last videos where you saw all sorts of stuff that's hard to catch on camera. Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably put this about a 7 out of 10 as well, but also probably rank it lower than the previous 7 out of 10 one we had. And obviously mm -hmm. the first one was 10 out of 10. Um, but, I mean, we'll get into spoilers. It's kind of hard to where to place it when comparing this one to the last one. Uh, so you've been warned we're going to jump right into spoilers. So uh, if you don't want to be spoiled, click off now. You've seen our rating. You know we recommend it, so go check it out. Uh, so... Any luck on this investigation for him? They did find um, some scat mm -hmm. that looked pretty large, larger than, you know, a coyote or a fox. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there was bone fragment and hair and stuff like that in it. DNA uh, said it was most likely a wolf. Most likely a wolf. You know, they are, unfortunately coyotes and wolves are so close, that's why they can interbreed and have like koi wolves. Uh, but it definitely looked too big to be even a koi wolf, so. But then there was some more more exciting evidence I would say. Indeed. After you know spending quite a few hours in the bush again uh, he had his flare camera out, his thermal camera out and he's just scanning the vista and then all of a sudden something bolts across. Quite canid looking. Definitely larger than a fox. You could see the big fluffy tail. Um, fast. You know, very fast. Very fast. Um, so he just jumps right out and runs back to camp, telling them to throw the drone up in the air. And they get the drone up in the air and they see two canids running with each other. Mm -hmm. Much like a Probably breeding a pair. So. A breeding pair. Yeah, definitely really exciting. Um, you know, luckily for him, he had the thermal and after, I think it was three or four nights of just sitting in that blind with no luck. Yeah. Uh, after I think it was like really early in the morning, 4 a.m. or something, mm -hmm. just scanning. I mean, super fast. Like, had he been looking the other way, he wouldn't have right. even caught it. So, very lucky there. Uh, fantastic find where it does appear that the Newfoundland wolf is not extinct, it's alive. And so, that's really good, you know, because now they can try to get conservation and stuff and, you know, try to bring back some healthy environment. You know, you saw it in Yellowstone overpopulation of prey animals what happens so very good indeed mm -hmm. the next one should be interesting it's the florida black panther that'll be exciting and you know jaguars i don't think are native there so you're like what's going on <laughs> there is the florida panther which is a mountain lion um, but usually i uh, don't think there's ever been uh, a count of a black you know morph so that should be fun. Uh, if you guys want to check out more Cool's reviews, though, click that link over my face. Uh, if you want to check out more of what we're doing here at Cool's Paranormal, click that link in front of Andrew. And uh, don't forget to hit that like and give us a subscribe. subscribe. And uh, let us know if you've seen this episode, what did you think of it? And is there any like strange animals in Colorado, perhaps, you want us to go check out? Tell us in the comments below.